Hey everyone, T.A. Sam back here with the second part of our part six on the eight part Microsoft Word tutorial. Uh, last part was on figures. This part's going to pick right back up where that left off, so please go back and watch that if you didn't already. Uh, one quick thing in the last video is we labeled this graph two and graph one. I realized that was probably poor semantic choice by me, so I'm going to go through and relabel those right now because it'll just confuse us later on. So let's say we'll call this one scatter plot. And then we'll call this one pie chart. And so now moving on to tables, I actually imported also a data set in here from the same file that I had the other graphs on. And so we're going to insert a table. And this is a seven columns by 16 rows. So if you're going to insert a table, and you can also insert pictures from here too, and a couple other things if you need to do that other than copy and pasting one in. But under the tables, uh, you can drag it out here our table is going to be a little too big, so we're going to have to go insert table. We said we had seven columns and we had 16 rows, but I'm actually going to put 16 plus one rows in here, and I'll show you why in a second. So that's going to come out to 17. And so we put in the number of rows we had plus one, and then we can copy, oops, we can uh, copy and paste this in. So we're going to copy that, and then we can just paste it. You see there it is, nice and clean. You, sometimes you might have to highlight the whole table, it depends. I think because this is already kind of in a table format. Um, and then it, I think this one did it automatically, but if you need to space these out, uh, like space your columns out, you can go over to table layout and go to auto fit. And then you can auto fit the window and it'll move it over. You can auto fit the contents completely. And you see that kind of makes it a little more compact. I want to take up the whole window though. And see, there's our table or our, our uh, data in the table, excuse me. And it's a little hard to read. And so if you remember earlier in our styles video, we made a table uh, label or table value font, excuse me, style. And so we can change it to that. And you can see it makes it a lot easier to read. So I think we set that to be, I don't think that changed it actually. Um, there you go, table, there we go. See there's size 12, it's a lot easier to read. It's still compact. So again, a general table value, you don't want any spaces above or below it. Otherwise it'll space your table out funny. You want it to be centered, aligned, and also in the middle, uh, in single space. So you can see there's our table. Let's try aligning that one more time. And I think we're about as good as we're going to get. And so one thing I want to point out here is that we don't have any units in here. And like in these two columns, the unit would be years. In these two columns, the unit would be percentage. And so how you're going to format your units is you want it in brackets in your um, header row right here and so you can see we have everything nice spaced out and another thing to keep in mind is that you want to keep your sig figs consistent so here we have two decimal places and we're consistent throughout so you don't want to have like three sig figs here four there you want it to be consistent so in here it should be just numbers now in order to make this look good what we're going to do is because this is you know it's good for high school but we're trying to write professional reports here not so good and so what I was taught is you don't want any columns in here. You want everything spaced out. And another thing is that you don't want, like, let's say this row were to end right here and you just have blanks underneath that. That's bad practice either. You need to reformat it so that you're filled up the whole way through. And so what we're going to do to do this is we're going to go over, we're going to highlight the whole table. We're going to go to table designs. We're going to go to borders and we're going to turn all borders off. So no borders. And it's going to look ugly for a second, but we're going to deal with it. We're going to be strong. And so this row up here is going to be our uh, header row, and we're going to, or our label row, and we're going to leave that for a second. And this is where, you know, it's personal opinion. Um, I personally like to do a one and a half point the whole way across. So that's going to look like this. So you want to separate off your table label from everything else. You want to separate out your header from everything else. And then you also want to separate out your values from everything else. And so this kind of ends the table. And if you were to have a footnote on your table, so I know one of the things we talked about on our design matrix is if you want to leave out your weightings from your design matrix, you could put those down here. So you would have your footer and then you would have another line under your footer. Or, you know, some people like that. Other people just want a footer. It's really, you know, a stylistic standpoint. I've done it once. I didn't put a line underneath my footer. Again, up to you. Ask whoever you're writing it for. They'll tell you what they want. And so, again, you see how we went from, you know, having this to having something easy to read, compact, looks a little more professional. 
Now, the one last thing we're going to do is I think we can also center this. It's not already centered. Yeah, it's already centered. Um, is we're going to add a table label. And actually, before I do that, I just want to double back. Um, you know, I mentioned it's your preference. Some other, you can go um, border painter again. And we're going to go to a half point. I've seen other people who like to have just this thick here, and you'd have like a half point across here. So it would look a little like this. Um, again, you know, it's really your call. I personally, I just prefer this. Um, and so now to add in our table label, what we're going to do is, and again, this is where it's important to be consistent because there's two different ways you can do this. So the first way is you can do table one and then have whatever it is. So this is, we'll call this um, uh, regular season because this is taken during the regular season. And what you could do here is you can merge these cells. And so you're going to do that. Go to table design, layout, excuse me, merge cells. And they're right there. And you can kind of drag this across. So if you just want to, so if I were to not highlight that and drag it, it's a little easier to do the grid light on if you want to do it different in the future. You see it changes the whole window. But if I highlight this specific cell, this specific cell, and drag it, it just changes that specific cell. So you could do it that way, so you have that, and then you would left align this, and you would be like that. Um, that's personally not how I like to do it, and so I'm going to undo all that. And what I'm going to instead do is do table one, regular season. And then I'm just going to combine this whole row. And then if you remember earlier, we made a format for our table labels. And there we are. And that's a pretty good looking table. However, we're going to do the same thing we do with our figures, whereas, you know, this is kind of more of a basic version. If we want to be able to renumber this, um, we're going to use our reference tab again. So I'm going to delete this out. And again, to put a reference in, we're going to go to reference tab. So that's Alt S. P for a caption, and this time where we had a figure previously selected, we're going to do table. And see, we don't have any tables in yet. This is going to be table one. We're going to follow the same thing. This is going to be called regular season. And it's going to actually put it above. So we're going to have to copy and paste it. And see, it goes right above the table. So you can cut it out, put it in here, set to go. And it already adopted the format we had in there of our um, table label. Where what table value? You probably see it before I do. Oh, it's ready table label. See him. Look at that. And so there's a nice looking table, easy to read, consistent, just a beautiful looking table. Um, I had a second example in here. I'm actually going to just scrap it entirely. Um, it's same process. And instead, we're going to move on to equations. So I put an equation in here, and actually, I think there's a ghost of a table haunting us. So there we go. Uh, and so for equations, where we used a table for a table, we're going to use a table for an equation. And so this is an easy way to space out your equations because usually what you want your equations to do is be in the center of a page. And so an easy way to do that is do a th three by one table, expand out right, expand out left, and then we're going to put an equation in the middle. And for an equation, you're going to go over to the insert. And actually, while we're here, we're just going to talk about the symbols tab. So there's a lot of symbols in here. You're going to be doing a lot of math. You can find all of your Greek symbols you need in here. Uh, and you might need to put these for an equation. I'm going to put this in. This is a t-test equation that I used in a statistical analysis for that project. Um, so I'm just going to put that in. And you see there's a couple built-in ones, but we can just go equation. And this is where you can type it out. So we have t equals, and then this is where you're just going to take a little premeditation. You can always go in and, and like re-highlight things. So if I wanted to, let's say, make a fraction, let's say I was talking about x over y, um, you know, I could do x and then I could highlight x and do a fraction to put a fraction in, and then I put x automatically on the top. I could put a y in the bottom. But a better way to do that is to try to think it up preemptively, so I could put a fraction in first and then do x over y. And so that's what we're going to try to do here. 
So first of all, we have a fraction before anything else. That's the this x part over the square root. So we're going to put a fraction in. And in the top part, it looks a little easier, so we'll handle that first. And we need some brackets around, so you can go over to the bracket and put some brackets in. Uh, next, we're going to need, it looks like we have a superscript, and we have a subscript. So we're going to put the subscript in first. So we can go script, subscript, and we can go 1, and this is x1. And then I think if we highlight this whole thing and we can put an accent in, and let's see if we have a line. We do. And again, you know, the other way we could have done that is put, and we'll do it for this, we'll do it for the next one. So we have to do a minus x2. So the other way we could have done that would have been, we need to get outside of that, would have been to put the accent in first, and then the script. and then our x2. So we have our top taken care of. Now let's do the bottom where we need a square root. That's a radical, so you can see your square roots in here. Put it in, and we have two different fractions, s1 over n1 squared, you know, s2 squared over n2. So let's put a fraction in, and we'll take care of, and you gotta make sure you're actually in your box, so you can see it's, this is pretty tedious, uh, to be honest with you. It's my least favorite part, it takes forever. You see there's derivatives in there and partials, uh, when you get over to it in your Calc 3 class and your Diffy Q. Um, so we'll take care of the top first. And so it looks like we have a squared. And then we also have a um, subscript. So we'll do that's 1s1 squared squared over n1. So I'll put the n1 down there. And, you know, this is pretty boring. Even me talking, I'm bored by doing this. But you still got to do it. And a way to speed this up is we have our S1 squared over N1. We can highlight that, copy it, and then we can just paste that and then just change the denominators. So if I wasn't showing you all how to do that, I would have done the same thing on the top. And that just kind of helps you speed it up. And you see there's a nice equation. And then this is where I get a little OCD because I, I think most people would say you'd be fine with your equation like that. But what I like to do is you can highlight it, and if you go over to equation, you see the automatic is latex. That's just what it does. Uh, but you can put it as a text. And your default for the text, you can see, is Cambrai Math. But we can put it as normal, and there's our Times New Roman. And it fits right in with the rest of the text, and it's not a different font than the rest of the text. And it gets a little compact, so you might have to space it out a little more in here, just so it's a little readable. Same thing with the equal sign. But I personally like this a lot more. And so you see that blends in with the rest of the text so much better. And then this is where, you know, again, there's two ways of doing it. You could go through in the numbered way, um, which is pretty easy to do because normally you don't have too many equations. But we can also do the same thing we did with our references. So what I encourage you to do with your mouse, you go over to the references, or excuse me, I encourage you to do the keyboard. Or I'm going to do the mouse just because we're going to need it in a second. Um, and I actually, I tip my hat on this one. I already had it changed. Um, you can see this is where you're going to pop up. You, you know, we were back on table. So you could put it in for your equation. And then you can see equation one. And then this is, you're just going to go one by one. So we actually don't even need to put a label on this. And you could do is put or click exclude label from caption. And you're just going to get a one. And again, it's going to go above selected item. So I had to copy and paste it back in. But there's a nice one right there. You can copy and paste that. And then the general rule of thumb for equations is that you're going to do it in brackets. So we can go and we'll paste that in. And it's important that you paste it because, again, we're talking all about field codes here. So you can see that's a field code. And so that will update automatically. So it's important you don't just, you know, write the one out. And then same thing we did earlier. Actually, we're going to align this first. So we want this box here to be, and go over to table design, or actually layout, want to be centered. Same thing over here. Actually, you might center. You can either center or center right. It shouldn't really change it too much. We'll go center right just because. Highlight your uh, whole box. And then you can go over to table design, borders, no border. And then there's your equation. Blends right in with the rest of the text because we did uh, our text mode. And it's centered perfectly. Uh, so anyway, so that was tables and equations. And next video, we're going to cover our table of contents now that we actually have things that we put in the content, or now that we have things to put in the content. 
So as always, like, subscribe, share with your friends, leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you. Uh, and good luck.